I've been making YouTube videos for a little while now, and for those of you that have been tuning in, thank you very much. I really appreciate each and every last one of you. For those of you that have been tuning in, I'm certain that you have noticed that I tend to take a very neutral stance on things, present both sides of the argument, and you might be curious as to why. Especially in these days when there are so many that are belligerently taking one side or another. Why am I remaining neutral whenever possible? When our society discusses issues politely with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. It's really hard sometimes to take a neutral position on things, especially when it's on a subject about which I have a strong opinion. But trust me, there's a good reason why I do this. If you want to tune into a video in which somebody is going to express a very strong opinion, whether they have evidence to back that opinion or they don't, you can find those all over YouTube. Finding videos where people genuinely look at both sides of the argument and try to understand where both sides are coming from, those are a little bit harder to find. And I th honestly think that that is a real shame. In the world I grew up in several decades ago, there were coffee shops. It was a rural area, so there were lots of farmers around, and when the farmers had finished their morning chores, during the growing season especially, they would often come to the coffee shop and sit around and talk and drink coffee and talk some more and drink some more coffee. And when they ran out of things to talk about, which was practically never, when the coffee ran out, which was almost as rare, or when they had to go back to work and get something else accomplished on their farm. That's when the discussions broke up. And I noticed something when I was sitting there watching my grandfather have discussions with people over coffee. The people sitting around those tables didn't necessarily like each other. They certainly didn't agree. And sometimes the discussions were rather emphatic. But they had the discussions. They talked about the issues. Everybody aired their positions. They they presented arguments that were sometimes common sense, sometimes extremely logical, sometimes very well thought out, and sometimes very reactionary. But they still presented their arguments. The discussion still went on. And when the discussion was over, nobody got mad. There was never such a vociferous discussion at the coffee house that the boys wouldn't be there the next day with a fresh pot of coffee and another two or three hours of discussing whatever issues came up, whether they were local issues, farming issues. I know national politics probably surprises people somewhat given that it was a rural setting, but I grew up in Iowa. And one peculiarity about Iowa when it comes to national politics is that we have some of the earliest primaries in the nation. Artifacts like the Ames Straw Poll give early feedback to the candidates about what their chances are in a national campaign. And to be honest with you, we saw candidates all the time. As far as I know, it's still like that. The day after the national election was over in November, the first exploratory committees started forming up and doing preliminary work. The day after the midterm elections, the presidential election cycle started with fundraising, with straw polls, with bean polls, with candidates showing up at coffee shops such as the one that I described earlier to have a chat with a half a dozen local farmers about what concerned them. For the more intellectual, less blue-collar candidates who wanted to discuss theory rather than practice and scientific evidence instead of common sense, instead of showing up at the coffee shops, what they would do is they would give talks to select groups of intellectuals and believe it or not Iowa has an awful lot of colleges so we do actually have a whole lot of intellectuals here and there and everywhere discussing theory discussing social problems discussing all of these things 
it's an interesting experience growing up in that environment and it definitely flavored my approach to life i want to hear all sides of the argument and this channel is an outgrowth of that aspect of my personality i still want to hear all sides of an argument i want to hear all the facts of an issue i want to hear all the feels of the issue even though i'm probably going to dismiss the feels as feels if we're talking about something scientific but i do want to hear what everyone has to say this channel is the same way i want to hear what people have to say about the issues that i raise i want to see the comments in my comment sections I want to see the likes. I also want to see the dislikes. I want to know what you think. I don't just want to tell you what I think. That's the reason for this channel. I want to bring people together to start these discussions just like I remember when I was growing up. The kind of discussions where we can cover the subject at hand, in depth, bringing every last scrap of information to the table and maybe just maybe figure out where the disconnect is find out where we agree work on compromise solutions which although not everybody's going to be happy about are the most workable solution for the problem take for example the discussions about the environment and climate change i do believe the climate change is going on i don't necessarily agree that human agency is the primary factor in climate change nor do I believe that human agency can modify the rate of climate change. I believe in good use of the resources that we have, but I also believe in good stewardship of the environment. If we don't have to dig an open pit mine to obtain the resource because we have enough recyclable materials on hand, then don't dig the pit mine. Sure, that's going to cost us a few jobs, but in the long run, it's going to be better for all concerned because the environment will remain intact. I'm an advocate for hunting and for fishing because those are also natural resources. But responsibility comes into play. If you're going to hunt, hunt animals that you eat. Don't just hunt so that you can stick a trophy up on the wall. See, that's part of good stewardship to make sure that the natural population of the local species is maintained to the greatest extent possible at least. Certainly there are some species that we want to protect that sooner or later humans will come in conflict with if they continue to encroach on their territory which is why I support the national park system. And this is just one thing that I think is worthy of discussion. If we can't come together and discuss issues then we're never going to find the solutions to these issues. We're never going to be able to deal with the problems at their root and solve them. And yes, problems can be solved. Anyway, I know this is not one of my normal videos, but I thought you should know where I was coming from. Because after all, that's just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with me. In fact, I'd love to hear what you think, so go ahead and give me a like or dislike and comment below. If you like this content and want to see more, feel free to subscribe and make sure that you ring the notification bell. New episodes of Roasted Opinions post on Wednesdays at 8pm and Saturdays at noon Central Time. Join me on the last Saturday of every month for my live stream with a special guest who joins me in the kitchen. New content is coming, so watch this space. That's it? That's everything? I think I remembered everything. Did I remember everything? Oh yeah! Um... No. Just... No.